Hi, my name is Alex, and today I'm going to share my story with you guys. I've been a little nervous about this, but hey, I think it'd be really cool if you guys knew me a little better. It all started in a small town in Mississippi. It seems like everybody there knew each other. I had my mom, my dad, and a little brother who was much younger than me. I lived in a trailer park, which for some reason people thought was something to be ashamed of, but I loved it. We had a forest in front of us, and in the mornings, deer would play in the field. We had a creek where I would always do my homework. It was perfect to me, but other people would make fun of me for it. My first language was Spanish. I didn't know much English, and it was really tough when I first got into school. None of the kids could understand what I was saying, and I couldn't understand what they were saying, so it was really hard to communicate. I remember my first day of school, I met these girls. They seemed to be really nice, so I hung out with them. In the morning, school would have devotion where all of the kids would get together and say a prayer before school started. When we went into the building, the three girls were whispering to each other, and they called me out and they started saying this word that I couldn't understand what they were saying, but they were whispering this word to each other and trying to get me to say it. I didn't know what this word meant because I didn't know any English. Little did I know that they were trying to teach me a bad word. So I gave in. I said the word that they wanted me to say. And they started laughing. So for some reason, I thought maybe it was something funny like a joke. Then they pointed to a teacher and kind of signaled me to say the word to her. So I did. But that's when I found out that the word I was saying was a pretty bad word and I ended up getting in trouble. The first day of school. School got tougher for me. When I was in third grade, the teacher would hand all of the students their work and she would hand me coloring sheets. She would treat me kind of like a kindergartner and I felt left out. I wanted to learn what they were learning too. My mom decided to sign me up to take some English classes so I could learn to speak English, and I could learn to communicate with people around me. Since there was a language barrier, I didn't really have any friends, so I was by myself most of the time. When I would get on the bus, I would always sit by myself. But one time, when I was coming home, I looked out the window, and I saw that my mom had something. When I came to see what it was, she was holding a video camera. I was really excited when I saw my mom with the video camera because when I was little, I had a dream that I wanted to be an actress, I wanted to be in movies, and so I would ask my mom to let me borrow her video camera every now and then, and my little brother and I would make these home films. My brother and I had a lot of fun making these films, and after we were done, we would have my mom and dad sit down in the living room and we would play the movies that we made and they would laugh, and it just made me really happy. That day was the day that I realized that the only thing I ever wanted was to make movies and make people laugh. I really didn't like coming to school when I was in elementary. Even though I was learning English, my English wasn't perfect and people would make fun of me. Even though I tried my best, it was really easy for me to get bullied because people would say stuff to me and I couldn't say anything back to defend myself. In middle school, I met my first best friend. I remember we were all outside before school started. And the teacher started handing out a lot of girls these papers. And I didn't know what they were getting because me and a few other girls didn't get them. And then this other girl came up to me and she was like, did you get one of those papers? And I was like, no. Later we found out that these girls who got these papers were invited to be in a beauty pageant. And then me and this other girl were really sad because we thought maybe we were too ugly to even be considered to be in the beauty pageant. But that's okay because that's when I met my best friend. And we started talking after that day. I think it's a little funny to meet that way. Around this time was where I met the guy who I first had a crush on. He was so cute, and I had a feeling that he liked me back. But his friends would tell him that I'm ugly, and 
and then he just started avoiding me. And I guess that was the first time I got heartbroken. My best friend and I would always sit together by ourselves during break time, and we felt like all the boys avoided us because we were ugly. I remember some of them even called me fat. They bullied us. But we would never say anything because we were too scared. I got really insecure after that and I started wearing baggy clothes to school. And people would make fun of me and tell me that I looked like a boy. In high school, my mom suggested that I should join some clubs and try to make some friends. So I noticed this robotics club and I decided to join. Once I joined the club, I met a lot of really good friends. One time, the robotics club had a competition in New Orleans, and all the students were going. I felt really bad because my parents didn't have a lot of money back then, but they worked really, really hard, and they were able to pay my trip, and I was really happy. Once I got in New Orleans, the competition was amazing. There was so many people cheering for us, and I had the most fun I've ever had in years. When I was 16, my mom came to the school to pick me up. I didn't understand why, because I wasn't sick or anything, but she told me there was something wrong with my dad and that he was sick, and we were going to the hospital. When we got there, we were all confused. The nurse gave my dad a room and told him to stay there. We didn't really understand what was going on, or why my dad had to stay in the hospital. When the doctor came out, he told us that my dad had cancer. This was one of the most toughest times of our lives. The whole world just came shattering to us. We didn't want to lose my dad. This was around the time where I got closer to God. My family would pray together. My mom would stay with my dad while me and my brother stayed with my godmother. I remember I started hating going to the hospital because I didn't want to see my dad sick. I would sit in my room by myself and I would pray to God and hope that everything would be okay. My dad had chemo treatment for months and eventually our prayers were answered and my dad was back to health again. <laughs> we were all really happy because we didn't want to lose my dad and thanks to God, we still have my dad here. We were happy until we realized that we had a large bill to pay for all the medical expenses and we didn't know how we were going to pay for it because we didn't have the money for it. Until a miracle happened and we got a notice that said that everything had already been paid for. We didn't know what was going on, and to this day, we never knew who paid for my dad's treatment. By the time I was in 11th grade, I created my own YouTube channel. I really enjoyed making funny videos, and I realized that that's all that I wanted to do. I love making people laugh. My friends would come over every now and then, and we would film all these funny videos and upload them to YouTube. These videos, they didn't get a lot of views, they'd get about 20 views, 10 views, but we would do it because we loved it. One day, I decided to create a shirt design for our YouTube channel. My mom and I stayed up all night ironing and printing the designs for the shirts. I came in that morning and I handed out the shirts to my friends. And we all wore the shirts in the same day, because we were so proud of our YouTube. Unfortunately, people started noticing that we made YouTube videos, and they would make fun of us for it. People would tell me that I was never going to go anywhere with it. One day, I found out that one of my friends burnt the shirt I gave him, and it really hurt my feelings. The girls in my class would always talk about how weird I am and how weird my videos were so I just decided to stop making them and I deleted my YouTube channel
After graduation, everyone had already planned what to do with their lives. I didn't know what to do with my future. My parents wanted me to become a doctor or a teacher, but my heart was always in filming and acting. That's when we all packed our things and moved to Texas. College was really expensive, and I felt like I wasn't ready. So, I decided to get a job. I started working at a candy store, but during the second day at work, the cash register broke on me and the customer got really mad because he wouldn't let me give her her change, and she complained about it, and I, I ended up getting fired the next day. Then, I started working in the flea market with my parents. I would sell toys, and that's how I made money to buy myself a good laptop and a good camera. That's when I decided to start doing YouTube again. I started making silly makeup videos where I would transform myself into a zombie, a clown, or even Spider-Man. It was really fun to do, but I started running out of ideas, and I didn't upload for a while. I was really into video games back then, so I decided to make a new gaming channel. On September 21st, 2014, I created Inquisitor Master. For a couple of years, I uploaded videos just because I enjoyed it. It was really fun to do, and I had a lot of free time. It was the most fun I've had in a while. I would work at the flea market and come back home and work on videos, and I really enjoyed it. I was really happy. One day, my camera and my laptop stopped working on the same day. I had a lot of dreams that someday my channel would get somewhere, but none of my family really understood how much I wanted to be a YouTuber. I didn't have much money to buy myself a new laptop or a new camera, so I decided to sell my Star Wars collection. And it kind of hurt because it took me years to put together. But at the end, I ended up getting the best camera and I found an okay laptop. A few months after that, my videos started blowing up. I was getting over 30,000 views on my videos. So I decided to stop working at the flea market to work on my YouTube channel full time. My parents weren't really happy with this, and even though they didn't understand why, they still supported me. I think all of the sacrifices that I've made were worth it. I ended up turning one of my most favorite hobbies into my job. I can't help but to thank each and every one of you who's watching this video for your support because I wouldn't be here without you. We reached 1 million subscribers today and I decided to make this video to tell you that your dreams can come true too, no matter how impossible it may seem. Thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart. I love you guys so much. Thank you. Never give up on your dreams.